Hello, Empress Justice here with part three of the Sun and Moon Irrevati reading. It is a new moon reading for the 12th of April 2021. Um, and we are now at part three, as I said before. I don't know why I repeat that, but we are now doing the 12 signs. And as always, let's start the timer. So, seeing as the new moon. Um, in Ravati is going to be taking part on a moon day we are going to start with cancer now with cancer the cards that i'm getting here are the king of wands and the princess of summer so let's have a look at this gentle sensitive kind inexperienced a new relationship or emotional experience invitations to social events a compassionate friend you can share your concerns with so the king of wands is the type of dude that goes from being like a sporty jock, a sort of, you know, not overly strong, but sort of very much in touch with both both his masculine and feminine side. But the way in which this manifests, um, it manifests in him, you know, being really good at sports, really active. And then he falls in love with another powerful person in their respective field, becomes part of a power couple and, in, you know, boosted by this new dynamic, um, this jock become, goes from being simply just a, a crowd pleaser to being an actual efficient and well-loved leader. So what does this mean for cancer? For me, the because um the son of Revati are both in the ninth house um it very much puts in mind with me of um this sort of larger than life figure influencing everyone so i feel like cancers are very much on that energy um at the time of the new moon um for the next two weeks to 30 days cancers are going to be very sort of front and center of you know of all the signs are going to be front and center and i feel that good fortune will definitely follow you because you know it's in your ninth house and it's in the third part of your ninth house which means you are going to be very very influential and what you don't say is is going to be even more powerful than what you do say so i really feel that the focus will be on long distance travel again um the further you go out from your home setting is the more successful your endeavors are likely to be. Um, the pitfall that you want to watch at this point is being too focused on the relationship aspects of things. That will sort itself out. You need to leave it where it is. Don't be too focused on relationships at this point, Cancer. Focus more on having fun and on long distance journeys on foreign cultures on cultures that are very very diverse from yours because that is where our fortunes are it doesn't matter who we are that's where our fortunes are and that's where your fortunes will be and focusing on healing the wounds with regards to these issues of how you relate to foreign cultures how you relate to long distance travel how you relate to yourself within the aspects of these things yeah um focusing on these things will draw a lot of abundance to you and with the anorada mc in your fifth house um you are going to be you know seeking help from spirit seeking help from mentorship um try not to do too much of that um it won't work out badly for you if you ask advice from other people but take for granted that because you're doing the work spiritually to kind of heal the wounds related to foreign travel and heal the wounds related to different cultures, take for granted that because you're healing these wounds, that you already have the wisdom to know exactly how you should proceed forward with regards to, um, to long distance travel, to understanding your core philosophy in life. Um, understanding how the how bridging the gap in this case leads to you having good luck in your life so yeah um what the sun and moon are imploring you to focus on is your ninth house go as far from your immediate environment as possible because it leads to really really good luck for you at this time 
um, and it is this thing here that will set off positive manifestations for yourself in the future so right now yeah i'm seeing that you you know foreign clientele or foreign cultures anything foreign anything long distance and anything foreign is going to be especially fortunate for vedic cancers at this time so that was my reading for cancer that is for um punavasu that is for Pushya and that is for Ashlesha. Thank you. All right. And now we move on to Taurus. All right. We move on to Taurus. So, with Taurus, you have the suspension card, the hanged man, and the emperor. Use logic and structure to increase your success. Get organized, a firm but compassionate leader. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, this is not going to be an easy one. Because what I'm seeing here is the distinct feeling that you feel like you've lost power. And you feel like you've lost... Um, a certain amount of agency in your own life it doesn't matter what the outcome of this situation is there's nothing that makes you more afraid than feeling out of control of a situation taurians tend to get very panicky when they feel that there are situations that are out of their control what you don't want to be right now taurus is stuck in fear okay just because you have to take a step back and you have to not be bossy anymore, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily lose out on anything. It just means that there are certain situations right now that do not require your input. So right now, just focus on yourself and focus on what you actually need. Let somebody else take over proceedings if they need to take it over. You don't need to be out here... Um, making decisions on everything when when basically you've already done all the work that you need to do that's what this is about it's not about you um not being needed anymore and i feel like that's at the root of your fears because if you're not going to be needed now are you going to be needed in the future it, it, it doesn't work like that taurus like you, you should know better than that it doesn't work like that it doesn't work that just because you're not needed in a particular situation, especially when it comes to business or your home or working life, right? Just because you're not needed now, it doesn't mean you're not going to be needed later. That's A. B, if it's come to a point where you have done all the work that you need to do, take for granted that this was actually a successful endeavor and that all you need to do is collect the rewards. The sun and Ravati, the sun and moon in Ravati are in your 11th house right now and they're in the third part of your 11th house which means acceptance which means you have gifts coming in that you need to that you need to accept coming into your life you need to accept the rewards one of the rewards being is that you actually get to rest and take some time off right now is not the time to be striving towards what you want right now is a time to you know to to heal your wounds when it comes to receiving you don't receive very well you like to give to people you like to be in control of every situation but you don't like to receive you don't like to to sit back and let things come in and right now the best thing for you to do would be to allow yourself to receive that whilst you focus internally on you know, like I said before, it, it's a sun and moon of It's all about healing your internal wounds, right? So that's what you need to be focusing on right now. The temptation with you is that you will want to focus on being independent and, and in, in going further and in pushing further in terms of what you want to do with your work in life or your home life. You're going to want to actually venture outwards and broaden your horizons and ordinarily that would be a good thing but right now it's the last thing that you need to be doing and even with you wanting to sort of you know to be a part of what other people are doing 
and to kind of insert yourself into what other people are doing even if they're doing something for you you need to temper those temper that need to sort of be in control of everything you have to temper that need to try to please other people because right now that's not what your life is about your life is about actually you know right now when it comes to the new moon for the next two weeks to 30 days this is about you taking time off to come to come within and to kind of understand why you find it so hard to sort of receive from people okay that's what you need to do you need to be comfortable with with receiving and you know and that's yeah that's my reading for Taurus can't lie you guys need to learn how to receive and that was for that was my reading for um Kritika um Rohini and Rigashira okay now let's all right and now we are starting with Virgo all right so Virgo you've got princess wands and you've got nine of autumn I'm already liking this reward yourself for all your hard work being happily and successfully self-employed cherishing your time alone um i'm already liking this um for you virgo um this is interesting because it's talking about enjoying your time alone and yet from what i can see um there is going to be big emphasis on soulmate energy from both the sun and moon in Revati in your chart it's in the third part of your decan so it's like there's going to be emphasis on not only soulmate energy but on but on actually leading people there's a there's a sort of power couple thing going on with virgo either you're considering the type of person you want in your life as a power couple or you're going to be part of that power couple and what makes a power couple is not actually physical influence it's it's it is how do i put this it is manifested passion it is manifested survival the survival of your bloodline it's also emotional connect connectivity that's what makes a power couple emotional connectivity and ancestral connectivity boosting and and empowering your bloodline so whoever it is that you attract to you is going to be somebody of that caliber and those are the things that you need to focus on for the new moon in Revati you need to focus on that soulmate energy if you need to spend time alone spend time alone but you need to actually heal the wounds with regards to these issues in your life because there is going to be somebody that comes along that match, matches that healed energy and listen man when that person comes along that person is going to be powerful as hell and yes it is romantic yes it is romantic that's the only that's the only way that i can interpret interpret the seventh house the third part of the seventh house it is entirely romantic energy let's be real because you can have soulmates in terms of family in terms of friends in terms of but it's not the same what i'm talking about is power couple energy that specifically preserves the power of your bloodline there is going to be a lot of consideration of that um for the next two weeks to to, uh, to four weeks the next two to four weeks there's going to be an emphasis on soulmate energy like i said either your soulmate is coming is already there or you're manifesting them but you need to heal the wounds surrounding those things and it's those things that are in their healed aspects that are going to ultimately nourish you so you know ordinarily i'd say oh you know now is the time to be alone because i've been saying it throughout this entire reading i've been saying it in two parts of the reading now but in your case virgo you're going to be enjoying your time alone and ironically that is exactly what's going to make you better company than most other signs right now and that's exactly what's going to help you manifest your um your soulmate energy so you more than anyone you can afford to actually be around people especially your soulmate 
because you and your soulmate are going to be vibing on that same energy of healed frequency because already as a virgo spending time alone is something you don't have a problem doing so you're going to be sharing that same healed energy with someone else virgo it's really it's it's really quite powerful to to feel and to see for you um and yes it is going to be material because nine of all and princess of wands fire and earth together are self-assertion so this is a very much a material enterprise you are going to be coming into your power in more ways than one and it is going to manifest materially and no you're not going to be alone for long you're not going to be alone for long so um yeah damn that's a hell of a reading for virgo <laughs> Um, so that was my reading for you guys. That was my reading for Virgo. That is for um, Uttara, Falguni, Hasta and Chitra. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. And now we come to um, Cappy. Yay, Cappy. How's it going, Cappy, Cappy? All right. Let's see what's in store for you. Um, for Cappies, yeah, we have moving and we have artistic talents. But let's have a look at what that really means in the long term. So for the Prince of Wands, what have we got? What kind of person is the Prince of Wands? The Prince of Wands is somebody that is, yeah... They're constantly moving and everything that they do, the alliances they create, the things that they do, all of that is aimed towards the things that they most believe in. So they start off being, um, they start off looking for somewhere new, coming into contact with what it is that they most, that they most believe in or that they truly believe in. And then they end their journey being in a new place in which they become a leader or in which they learn their leadership abilities or in which you know their principles their internal principles are aligned with their environment and now let's let's have a look at the tenor summer an emotionally fulfilling life with family or friends raising children wisely people you can trust yeah so capricorn you're going to be moving to a place that is actually in line with your principles and because of that, the people that you surround yourself with, the the work that you do, the activities that you in, engage your time in, all of those things are going to come together beautifully, beautifully to the point where you draw the most wonderful relationships to you. It is a, it is a, it's a lovely um, energy that I'm getting for Capricorn right now um it's a lovely energy i'm not gonna lie to you it's beautiful um yeah so of course all the, the all, there's all this emphasis on your third house so wherever it is you're going to be moving to you're not going to be moving far it's going to be somewhere extremely near to where you are right now so it's not going to be for, it, it might be down the road it might be in another town over, but wherever you move to, it's not going to be that far. It's going to be very near to you. Um, there's going to be this energy of no charity. I don't want charity and I don't want to hang around people who want it either. Um, try not to, to be so first house focused. Try not to be so focused on the image you project and try not to be so 11th house fo focused. Like, what am I getting out of it? That's not what's important right now. What's important right now is where you move to and the effect that it has on your relationships with your extended family, your siblings, your grandparents, aunts and uncles. Um, it affects how, you know, it affects your ability to move from one short distance place to the other. Like these are things that you need to focus on. And also you need to focus on your formal education and your um the way that you communicate with others that will come into focus too so wherever you're going to move to all your beliefs about life they're going to be 
like your positive beliefs about life they're going to be merged all in one place you're going to be the happiest you've ever been and from there you're going to be asked to sort of review your options when it comes to formal education because you realize exactly what you want to do but the, the difficulty is is in finding the money to do it or listen you'll work that out later right now you've got enough on your side to get the ball rolling okay so i see a very happy time for the cappies coming up i love to see it um i see a very happy time for you guys um everything on point loved ones family friendships romances all, all the way on point you're going to attract wonderful people into your life and like i said it's right in line with you know your internal feelings and that will heal a lot of wounds with regards to your siblings and your life in general um so that was my reading for capricorn that was for utra shara um shravana and danishta thank you very much Cappy. okay Oop. all right so we're done with moon and the earth signs now we're gonna be doing um it's the next sign aries no it's pisces this is Pisces, all right. So with, oh, with Pisces, okay. Okay, this is looking good as well, but let me see what comes up for five of spring. Opposing goals arising from differing opinions, feeling at odds with yourselves or others, overly ambitious people. I really don't see that. I see you moving on up. I don't see you clashing with other people. In fact, I see you standing out i see you becoming yeah i see you standing out i see you actually making moves out here you're, you you know you're getting attention for all the right reasons your talent is standing out your abilities are standing out and the people that you attract to you instead of being in direct opposition with you the kind of people that you actually attract are complementary opposites rather than directly in competition or anything stupid like that right your sun and moon are both in your first house and they're in the third part of the first house which means you're trailblazing you're 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 leading a path you're, you're the one making the rules and that's exactly what you need to be doing right now pisces you need to be the ones making the rules you need to be the ones deciding exactly what's going to happen and who's going where and all that kind of business right um what you don't need to be focused on is um, anything, you know, to do with trying to be. You don't want to try too hard to be the iconoclast because you are already the iconoclast. You don't want to try too hard to be diverse because you're already diverse in and of yourself, Pisces. You're Pisces. So for right now, focused on being the most powerful manifestation of your actual self and one thing you don't want to focus on is trying to be too too much of a i do things my way sort of you know you don't want to be on that energy you want to be on the energy that is masterful that is powerful that blazes the trail physically that sort of does it with, with you know with no self-consciousness with no sort of you know self-awareness of this is how powerful i am no you're gonna get on with it you're gonna do it and when it comes to this you know this fun group of people who are like your complementary opposites you are going to be leading the charge but it's going to be fun it's going to be very very enjoyable it's going to be um yeah it's, it's going to be very enjoyable um you're not going to be you're not going to want for anything materially you're not going to want for anything um yeah i see a really good I, I see good times ahead for your career and especially for your self-assertion because again fire earth self-assertion so anything that you manifest for your own gain i feel will turn out extremely well for you um work wise vocation wise there is going to be a lot of emphasis on your work and vocation and on your overall image 
the image that you project to people. But I see this being very positive for you and very healing and, you know, and very sort of um, actually very grounded. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I know we're in Ravati and I'm reading for Pisces, but because of your innate understanding anyway, I feel that you know the higher frequency among you anyway you won't be so focused on trying to shock or trying to press buttons you'll actually be focused on mastering yourself and and doing things that other people haven't done before and blazing the trail for other people like you and along the way meeting other people like other counterparts that are actually healing and that aids you on your way to being a trailblazer in your career and in your life. I'm thinking of a couple of people in particular that I could name here, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and blazing a trail and and leading the way for a good many other people is what is in store for Pisceans right now. So, yeah, I really feel that for the Pisces people it's it's going to be good times ahead for you i know it seems like it you know it was really hairy for a lot of pisceans a lot of vedic pisceans it was quite hairy but um i feel like yeah good times are ahead for you guys good times are ahead because in, now you're kind of thinking to yourself how can i use what i know to to blaze a trail for other people so that was my pisces reading that was for Purva Bhadrapada. Uttara Bhadrapada and Revati. So, there we go. And now, who am I going to read for now? We are reading for Aries. Okay. Alright, so for Aries. Antisocial behavior. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yikes. Alright, so... Your focus is going to be on trying to unite the dualities within yourselves. Um, the sun and the moon are in, of course, the third part of your 12th house in Revati. Um, in the Revati of your 12th house. So basically, you are going to be exhibiting those behaviors that um Revati is actually known for it you know it's odd that Pisces wouldn't be doing that but it's actually going to be more of an Aryan thing to do um to the point where people may be actually quite worried about you and I know it sounds really bad um but let's read from this um powerful intuitive epiphanies you see this is what's causing it letting go of worry and fear understanding the truth of a situation um, a lot of people are, might be worried about you Aries because you're pulling back so much um, you're pulling back so much and you're kind of you know it makes other people worried have I done something wrong they may have done something wrong but you're not pulling back because other people have pissed you off you're pulling back because you need to kind of understand your life and understand the world around you with a bit more clarity People are worried though because you're not normally like this. Yeah. Um, there's a need within you to get to the bottom line, and there's a need within you to kind of to kind of how do I describe it? Like to make everything business like. Like you know, this is what I've got to do, this is the bottom line of what I have to do, like it or not, it's not that there isn't any room for that, it's just that it's kind of at odds with, you know, you connecting with an understanding of vulnerability in order to ground yourself in balancing both parts and both aspects of your being, because if you do with this bottom line nonsense, and you do all this you know, this is the root of everything and this is how it has to be. If you end up doing that to yourself, then you kind of impede your ability to be able to understand the truth of a situation, you know, to connect with your intuitive being. You cannot allow yourself to sort of become too hard edged 
and to see your to see your behavior of like kind of being a loner as a business decision um because that will lead you to view other people coldly and you like you don't want to do that it's not going to help you um and you know that's actually what makes something antisocial what makes something antisocial is why you're keeping your distance not what not what you're doing if you're keeping your distance because you're trying to be a hard tough business person that's going to bite you in the ass but if you're doing it to kind of understand your own vulnerability and understand where you need to balance opposing viewpoints and balance opposing if you're doing it for that reason that's going to work out well for you so don't worry about other people um not want you know other people feeling like you know you're not giving them enough attention i feel like as an arian you give people the most attention i don't know what more they want from you you give people the most attention you know in fact that's usually at a time where you're the one who needs it but because you communicate physically people don't always listen to what you have to say you're the one who needs attention and yet you always end up giving it to other people so let make them thunder listen man make them stay there and fucking like speculate or why you're keeping away from them it's got nothing to do with anyone else anyway this is your time aries this is your time to come within and to decide exactly what you need to do for your own life so yeah aries that was my reading for ashvini barani and kritika thank you aries and remember don't let anybody don't let anybody tell you you're being antisocial or anything like this make them, make them piss off sure all right so now we are doing i think we're doing gemini aren't we yes we are doing gemini so with gemini we've got the death card and ten of autumn take steps to ensure the financial security of your children or other loved ones making wise investments or planning for retirement honoring family traditions um this thing is not as um as morbid as you might think actually um right off the bat i can tell that gemini's are preparing for their deaths i'm not going to i'm not going to lie to you gemini's are preparing for their deaths and i'm not talking about you know um killing themselves or anticipating dying but depending on what's actually taken place in your life you may be considering how to financially make sure everybody's set after you're gone so that you don't have to think about it anymore um yeah i see that yeah i'm getting vibes from this of the um the near future cards from the celtic cross reading i'm getting that vibe um the changes are delayed and you know th there are signs of what you could have and there may be the temptation to sort of take the first offer but the beautiful the beautiful home and the strong family you're looking for it will come to you you won't go to it so it's like with gemini's um don't take the first offer that's offered to you and when it comes to your beautiful home a beautiful home and strong family links yeah you're going to be receiving those in abundance not only are you going to be traveling to beautiful homes you're going to have a beautiful home of your own and the family links the links with your original family is going to be strong but then you're going to have strong links with your emotional family as well so I'm seeing a very grounded, a very strong time for Gemini's right now. Um, the sun and moon are in the third part of your 10th house, which is to do with dominance. But you're not going to be focused on dominating over anybody. Um, instead, all that technical knowledge that you're going to use, you're going to use towards preparing for your future and 
setting a strong foundation you know a lot of people get gemini's twisted and think that you guys are just flighty and you just you just want to party all the time or you know if you're tropic cancers people think that you know you just want to stay in your yard and not and not you know and not focus on anything but that's not true at all vedic gemini's or any gemini's are very shrewd and very business-like and this is exactly the attitude that you're going to take for the next two week, two to four weeks. You're going to be very pragmatic. You're going to be like, okay, what needs to be done now? How do I need to go about this situation? And when it comes to, you know, I see wills, I see power of attorney um, documents being made so that everybody knows exactly who's going to be getting what and there's not going to be any confusion. So I see from every angle of your life, Gemini, you are going to be taking complete control. You ain't going to have a damn thing to worry about because you know exactly where you're headed and you know you're not headed in a bad place. You know you're headed in a good place, but you're not going to let yourself be caught short by anybody. You're not, you're not going to allow that. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be writing up documents and drawing up documents and making sure no fucker can can screw you over um, at a time when you can't defend yourself or can't stand up for yourself. So yeah, like I said, it seems more morbid than it is. Um, your sun and reverie are in the third part of your tenth house, so you're gonna be very determined, very focused. Um, the ac in your eighth house and the mc in your sixth house it means there may be enemies around you but you're not going to be focused on them um you're going to be focused on what you actually need to be doing to, to set up your future and to strengthen your public role in life and to strengthen your public image that's what you're going to be focused on you're not going to be focused on what any, any anybody else is doing so that's the reading for Mrigashira, ardha and ponavasu yeah thank you gemini's okay now we've got leo's let's see for leo's what have we got for leo's we've got the vice card which is normally the devil card you can see her little horns and tail and then we've got the three of spring plan your next steps with an eye to the long term have patience there are more good things to come satisfaction for a job well done so what i get from this yeah so the irony is is that the sun, both your moon and sun are in the the third part of your eighth house which is to do with emotional control discernment um the very heights of sensual pleasure which means like there's a discriminating air about the things that you invite into your life and you allow into your life um that you know your ac is in the sixth house and your mc is in the fourth um, which means that home matters may take center stage right now, but you don't want them to. Um, what you're actually focused on right now is your primal response. So you're focused on not necessarily your psychological, um, the psych not necessarily your psychological aspects or your subconscious like Aries will be. You're not necessarily focused on that, but you are focused on on your psychological processes how you process your subconscious energy so your sexual drives will you know you'll be healing aspects to your sexual drives the way you transform things your attitude towards death because gemini was thinking about that before but in leo it's more of a philosophical thing so you're rethinking your attitude towards the more transformational aspects of life sex death the occult psychology um, the fact that it's in the eighth house means that your attitude towards these things are, are usually very accepting anyway. And they're usually very sort of whatever happens, happens. I'm here to live life for now. That's the kind of attitude I get from Leo's when they have their eighth in Pisces like that. It, you know, it kind of makes me think you guys are very accepting of death. Or you, you're not scared of it. Um, so with that in mind because you're not scared of death that's exactly what gives you the will and the discipline to live well and in this case that means not giving into your addictions 
and that actually means living moderately finding ways to live moderately that still enables you to enjoy yourselves i see i also see the need for you to patent certain ideas of yours write them all down and look up patenting research patenting because there are people who may try to steal your ideas i don't see it happening actually but just be aware to protect your intellectual property as well um nothing's going to happen to it i don't think anything's going to happen to it but you're not doing this because you're scared somebody will take it you're doing this so you can actually profit from what you're doing that's what you need to do leos you need to actually find ways to profit from what you're doing this vice is here for a reason prepare for every eventuality um yeah um i don't see i don't see a bad um i don't see a bad time for leos if i'm honest um i do see you manifesting great things when it comes to your vocation and when it comes to your spiritual life in particular so that means physically emotionally and mentally a lot of things are going to line up there are there are big rewards in store for you because of the work that you've been doing um so yeah um for my leos i i really see um that it's gonna be it, it you know things are gonna turn out really well for you guys and you know i love to see it um but of course you're you're you know you're cautiously optimistic you're not over the top happy like you, you know you're happy but you're not over the top because you know what goes up must come down but you're not scared of the down and that's exactly what keeps you so buoyant most of the time so that was my reading for leo that was for maga parva falguni and utra falguni it's pretty short actually so libra libra all right so it says first of all we've got two fours and that's worth considering um, manage your resources wisely achieve a balance in how you spend and save money help out those who are less fortunate now the number four is the number of mercy grace charity okay it's also the number up of upheaval revolution um so for many libras what i'm seeing is your sun and the new moon are both in the sixth house and um they're in the third part of the sixth house so you really need to make your make your wishes known and make your wait make your wishes clear because there are certain people who are going to think that you don't have a voice to use and they're going to try to use that against you um those toxic relationships in your life they will be severed they will be severed because the spotlight will be on your open obstacles and because of that a lot of people who are trying to make a nuisance out of your life if they try to do that openly they will get found out immediately so my advice to anybody cross watching that is going to bother a libra if you're going to bother them if you're going to make their life a misery buy yourself out right now because you know if you bother a libra the sun, the spotlight is going to be right on you and this new moon is encouraging anybody bothering a libra the, the new moon is encouraging them to handle that shit okay so if you're messing with the libra don't leave them librans alone okay so with that um there's also the need for librans to focus on their health care on their daily routines on services on anything that you know that needs to be maintained daily okay because these things will will form how you you know these things will form how you um how you basically move move through your life for the next two weeks to, to four weeks um you need to focus on your health care whatever health concerns you have make sure you sort them out um during this new moon period um there's going to be emphasis on your wealth um and your possessions um 
you are a little bit concerned about them because you don't you know there are certain stuff you want to get rid of and you don't know what to get rid of yet um this is going to sound weird but think about the image you want to project think about what you want your life to be and if the possessions that you have right now do they match that energy that you're trying to project do they match that do they match your your true personality as it is of this moment most importantly does it match the health that you're trying to achieve if the answer to those questions are no then get rid of them what i see here is respite i see respite from the bullshit so i see yeah when it comes to toxic relationships you're you're not going to be you're not going to be in that um those will be removed from your life forcibly removed from your life because the spotlight is going to be on those toxic relationships and on those people who, who try to um, upset you, Libra. The spotlight is going to be on them. So I feel that what you need to do is kind of, um, yeah, cut. The, yeah, you can you can cut them out of your life. Actively do that. Um, AC in the fourth and MC in the second. Um, you're going to be focused on material wealth, as I said before, your possessions are going to work, you're going to sort of buggy, but don't worry about it. Um, what I'm seeing is that right now is your time to relax. If you get rid of something that you don't need, then you get rid of something that you don't need. But I really see that for Librans, this is a time for you to kind of relax and let someone else take care of certain details. You can focus on your health if you need to. Focus on your health because the sun and moon are there. Focus on your health, but try not to focus on anything else for now. Because you've already got, you know, you're already doing everything that you need to do. So, yeah, focus on your health care. Focus on your, on your, you know, personal care, hygiene, all that kind of thing there. Like your daily stuff. So, that was for Libra. That was for um, Chitra. Svati and uh, Vishaka. And now we come to Scorps. All right. So Scorpio. Um, we've got the Prince of Coins and the Three of Winter. Prince of Pentacles, Three of Winter. So what does this say about... First of all, let's get to the Prince. What does it... What's the Prince saying? So the prince is actually the knight of pentacles. They start off as a person who, um, you know, basically they never stay the same. The knight of pentacles or the prince of coins, they move slowly. They move slowly. But the thing about the Knight of Coins is that they move so slowly is that before you know it, that you've already moved on. It's like, you know, you they move so slowly, you don't see them coming. And with the Three of Winter, reach out to others for comfort and love. You will grow stronger from the situation, sadness that will heal with time. So, um, it's like you're, it's like... You're moving so slowly and things are progressing so slowly that you're worried some catastrophe will come up and fuck it all up, right? The new moon and the sun are in the third part of your fifth house. That means a lot of volatile emotions are coming out. You, Your leadership qualities are coming through, but there's a lot of deep, complex emotional energy behind it all. So yeah, while you're enjoying your job or you're enjoying your... You know, while changes are being made slowly but surely in your life, there's a part of you that's constantly worried you're going to lose it or constantly regretting the things that you already have lost. Um, I get it. I really, really do. But the thing is, is that you're enjoying yourself now. So why are you fixated on any of this? No, I demand an answer, Scorps. 
I demand an answer. Why are you <laughs> why why are you focusing on shit that's making you upset? Let yourself be happy. Like right now the fifth house is challenging you, yeah, to focus on your health and stuff like that, but it's the part of your health where it relies upon your joy of being, your joie de vivre. So let yourself have fun. Let yourself enjoy it. Take care of your health, sure. But make sure you enjoy what you're doing, man. Play games. Like fucking, you know, for instance, if you're going to eat vegan, eat fun vegan food. Fuck it. Like, why are you going to, why are you going to focus on stuff that's making you miserable, Scorpio? You know, you're just wearing yourself out. I know that, you know, you probably have regrets or you probably have heartache behind you. All bad times might come, but for the next two to four weeks, I'm not seeing that, Scorpio. I'm not seeing any bad times ahead for you. So what the hell are you worried about? Just enjoy what you're doing. Right now, you may be working a fun job or you may be doing fun activities or you may be surrounded by people that you love to be surrounded by who make you laugh, who make you, you know, who make you, who remind you of the good things in life. You, if you've got all that, then just chill. Just chill. You've got nothing to worry about. The third house and the, and the first house. So you've got your AC in the third house. And you've got your MC in the first house. So um, you may be... You may be more concerned with filling the gaps in your education or your career. Or, you know, filling the gaps in terms of your personal image. But I really don't... I really don't... You know, I don't see where you need to fill in any gaps right now, Scorpio. Um, right now you're fine. You're doing okay. You're doing a lot better than you think. This is not there. This is only there in your in your own mind because you're going over old hurts and you're anticipating more of the same. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, Scorps. So that is my reading for um, Scorpio. That is for Vishaka, Anurada and Jeshtha. Ooh, all right, so we come to Sag next. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Now we've got the Queen of Cups and the King of Summer. Let's read the King of Summer. Honorable, devoted, mature, warm-hearted, a romantic partner you can trust. Excellent advice that comes from the heart, getting involved in cultural or creative endeavors. Oh, my. Whoa, oh. So, Sag, 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 Sag. Oh my goodness me. Okay, so we've already been over the King of Cups. The man who goes from being a weak soul into a healer, who goes from being, a, you know, a loving but vulnerable man into a, you know, a strong, you know, resilient healer who's learned hard lessons. And then we've got the Queen. Who goes from being, you know, goes from being that, you know, that person who seeks to define herself through relationships, but then comes to define relationships. So to put them, to put these two together. So to put these two together now, it's like they go from needing each other to wanting each other. <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh gosh i think sagittarians is going to be a bit longer than the other ones because th there's so much to unpack here um so the king and the queen go from wanting go from needing each other to wanting each other knowing that they can thrive by themselves knowing that the queen defines the relationship and the the king is the master of healing so they don't need each other but they want each other and they make each other's lives better when they're together. And I feel that that's the energy that I'm getting for Sagittarius. I'm getting that that self improvement. You've learned hard lessons. You've been you've learned hard lessons, and along the way, you've had psychic insights that's led you away from greater danger than you could have been in. It's led you away from greater danger you know, from greater danger that you could have faced. It's led you away from that. It's protected you. It's seen you through. And now 
you are dictating the terms of love and you are healing people ah oh. your sun and the moon are in the fourth part of your in, you know the third part of your fourth house so of course your attractiveness powers are going to be up they're going to be through the roof i'm not going to lie to you your attractiveness powers are going to be up right now because not only are you physically looking good but emotional you have you have emotional mastery crazy emotional mastery right now and there's such a focus on self-improvement so you do become a leader of sorts you do become the person that everybody listens to but it's in a way that you become you become the emotional master you become the emotional leader you become there's a difference between the fake leader and the real leader a fake leader is one that takes charge physically they see themselves as the commander when really they are the soldier and then there's you and your emotional energy which is the opposite your intuition is you know your intuition and your focus on self-improvement is making you actually the stronger of the equation you attract love that you actually want you heal yourself from the inside and both of those things together made you a powerful force to be reckoned with and um where your ac is in your second house and your mc is in your 12th house um yeah this is where you kind of try to tune in with your subconscious in order to define yourself but you're being asked to kind of stay away from that for now and focus on the happier aspects or the more joyful aspect of your home life because that is where that rich seductive energy comes from that is where your ability to persuade and seduce comes from joy a lot of people don't realize this but the happier you are in your home life is the more persuasive you are in all er other areas of your life but why do i need to tell you this sagittarius have already mastered it i really feel that with this i feel like you will attract the fire to your water this is so oh my god sag I don't know if it's romantically, I don't know if it's family or what, but you will attract the fire to your water. I'm feeling like it's most it's most likely um friendship wise or or but n do not rule out romance. Don't rule it out. I feel that with this mastered emotional energy you are going to attract people to you who are more dramatic leaders and you know who are powerful business people because they're going to be looking to you to 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 help them they're going to be looking to you to help their cause if i can suggest one thing sag i suggest that you make sure that you get something out of it but then i don't need to tell you that because at this point you're going to know how to form relationships on your terms and get business negotiations on your terms make sure your boundaries are clear you've already learned the hard lessons needed reinforce your boundaries and these leaders that are attracting themselves to you get it get it get it get it sag you've got this I'm rooting for you. So that was my reading for Sagittarius. That was for Mula, Parashada, and Uttarashada. And now for the last sign, Aquarius. Now, this doesn't actually look very nice, but I can assure you, Aquarius, is that it's not as bad as you think it is because already I'm not getting that vibe of doom and gloom. Let's see what the Five of Winter says. Walk away from dishonest associations, realizing that what you thought you wanted isn't the best choice for your happiness, something that's not worth the effort. All right, so with Aquarius, who okay, 
I promise that there is a, a, a silver lining in this cloud. I promise, Aquarius, okay? But what I'm seeing is you surrounded by, you know, the, the Revati reading that I did in the first part with um, being surrounded by negative people, emotional pain and regrets. I feel that this will affect Vedic Aquarians most acutely. Um, especially if you have Aquarius rising or Aquarius moon, it will affect you most acutely. And I am so sorry to say this. Um, you may have sleeping problems, night terrors. Um, it might be down to, um, really traumatic relationships. It might even have to do with abuse in your life that you've suffered. I'm sorry to say this, Aquarius, but you may be having very acute pain um, because of everything that you've suffered and everything that's being invoked in your life and um, with your moon and your sun in your second house but in the third part of your second house there's a strong need within you to just let it go you want to let it go and it's a good instinct you should let it go but how do you let it go how how to let it go that's a million dollar question and with your ac in your 12th house and your mc in your 10th house it's like you're coming to the end of all this this is this is what i said it, it, there's a silver lining you are actually coming to the end of all this you know, this long drawn out period of, of focused on being focused on your heartache and focused on your pain. You're coming towards the end of it. And I do see light at the end of the tunnel. I do see light at the end of the tunnel. I do see, you know, you being, you having a sense of release from everything that's held you back. Um, but it's just like, for now, you kind of have to brave it out. You have to brave out the pain. You have to brave, brave out. And what I would suggest you to do, Aquarius, is to actually say what's on your heart. Not what's on your mind, what's on your heart. You have to give your heart a chance to say what it needs to. Because that's the only way you're going to heal and move past certain issues in your life that have plagued you. And I really wanted this reading to be positive. And it is. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I promise you. Aquarius, I promise you. But unfortunately, you've, really, you've got to be out of all the signs. You've got to be the most careful about the company you keep. You've got to be the most careful about you know you cannot consume anything that's going to trigger you anything that's going to make you feel bad anything that's going to reinforce negative self-esteem issues you've got to be careful about every single thing that you consume Aquarius and I love you enough to say truthfully that you will get through this your second house your possessions are looking good the spotlight is on them at the moment so physical expression or t taking comfort in the things that you enjoy physically, that's going to be one of the ways in which you help yourself to heal. And it's going to be one of the ways in which you make yourself feel worthwhile again. Aquarius, I love you very much. You have got this, I promise you. This is my reading for um, Danishta. Shatabisha and Perva Bajrapada. So, I want to thank everyone for joining me. This was not an easy reading to do, but like I said before, there are very challenging aspects that might make a you know a difficult time for all of us. But I promise you guys, it does have a wonderful outcome. And yeah, just keep the faith, stay vulnerable, stay open, 
find your nurturing aspects and find nourishment um, in whichever is the healthiest way for you. With that, I'm going to love you guys and leave you. Empress Justice out. For real, Justice Tarot. I love you. Bye. Blessings. Peace and blessings.